Hi, everybody. Hi, we're back. We I'm are Randy. Back. I'm Tal. We're back when back when. Thank you for coming to our Friday night get together. We are coming into your living room. We're in kind of my little living room. We're in our house in uh, outside of Victoria, BC, in Sydney, and we know you're obviously in your house. Yeah. Well, yeah. Hope you're doing okay. <laughs> we're getting a lot of emails. People are pulling out the old board games, so. Uh, if you check on your internet, you'll see that jigsaw puzzles, which only sell at Christmas, are selling out. They're shipping them all over the world. Uh, I know my daughter in Lethbridge is doing a thousand piece jigsaw puzzles. And get out your Scrabble and your Monopoly and play games. Get out your watercolors, paint. Get out your old coloring books and color. I've been catching up on some really important reading. Good. We just picked up the National Enquirer last <laughs> night. Oh, heavy reading. Caught up on Megan and Harry. I'm, um, I've watched everything on Netflix. I'm soon to do Netflix reviews. Yeah, have you watched the entire thing? Almost everything. I'm on one last <laughs> thing now called Scott and Bailey's Three Police Women in, in London. It's very good. I'd like people to post on the comments what they're actually doing with their time here. I bet we'll hear some really creative ideas. There's some great stuff on Netflix. And other than that, whatever you're doing that's family-oriented, like chess and checkers. Indoor, can... indoor hide-and-seek. The indoor hide and seek without the seek. So just tell everybody to go and hide, and they go hide somewhere in the house, and you never find them. So that's that's the way to keep your distance. Yeah, for parents to keep their sanity, they can pretend to be playing hide and pretend seek. Pretend I'm kids coming, go hide, yeah. coming to look for you, and, and then, then just, the parents don't look for them. Don't look for them. Yeah. Okay. Okay, we're going to start out with uh, a Steve Miller song. I met Steve a zillion years ago. We were recording in Seattle at the K Smith Studios. I was there doing BTO2, which had on Let It Ride and Taking Care of Business. And he was doing the Fly Like an Eagle album, which had on Fly Like an Eagle, The Joker, Rockin' Me Baby, a couple of others. So here we're gonna go. And Steve Miller um, invented a word for this that I thought was Latin. So Steve Miller invented a new Latin word called pompatus. <laughs> the space cowboy some people call me the gangster of love some people call me maurice you got the pompatus of love people, people keep talking about me baby say i'm doing you wrong doing you wrong doing you wrong well, don't worry, don't worry, don't worry, baby. Cause I'm right here, right here, here at home. Cause I'm a picker, I'm a greener, I'm a lover, I'm a sinner. Play my music in the sun. I'm a joker, I'm a smoker, I'm a midnight toker. Shake your 
your tree. Come on over here, baby. Lovey, dovey, lovey, dovey, lovey, lovey all the time. Ooh-wee, baby, I'm gonna show you a good time. Cause I'm a picker, I'm a critter, I'm a lover and a sinner. I play my music in the sun. I'm a joker, I'm a smoker, I'm a midnight toker. songs for that progression. Okay, time for tell. That was for Steve Miller. Uh, yeah. I haven't seen him in a long time, but uh, another class. Every time he's on stage and I'm there, I run up and sing with song with him. You know, it's really funny when you get these songs that just get slammed at radio forever. They never Played go away. all the time. And then there's all these hits that, you know, they had their moment in the sun and they just vanished. But anyway. All right. All right let's try this. All right. Bee Gees wrote this. Dolly and Kenny made it a big hit. One of the greatest...
another coordinated ending by accident. <laughs> by accident. Wow. By the way, Dolly and Kenny. We do this kind of surprising each other. I get five or six songs together that maybe he doesn't or does know, and he gets some together that I really don't know, and we dive into them. We, I just printed out the next one. It turns out there was another verse, and I... Okay. It doesn't matter. Boy, he's got some hard matter. He's trying to stump me on these. Okay, I'm doing a, I do a real easy thing. Once I checked with my grandkids, like when they were growing up, they're three or four, five, what are your favorite songs? And they love Shania Twain. Actually, they learned to write numbers uh, from the Shania Twain album. Mm. They learned that they did the number four not like this, they do like digital, like because on the CD player. That's how they learned to do their two. It's all the kids write in digital. Now they're all computer experts. Anyway, their favorite song besides most of Shania was this, Johnny Cash. Johnny Cash. Love is a burning thing and makes a fiery ring bound by wild desire. Johnny Cash. All right. My hero. I wear black. By the way, black is the new black. <laughs> okay, Tal's going to stump me now. All right. I know these guys. Uh, Atlanta Rhythm Section, right? Atlanta Rhythm Section. Yeah. Under, underrated band. ARS. Well, you know, I was a little kid, and this song got blasted all the time on FM radio. Mm. It sounded so good. It sounds so fat and warm and analogy and tuby. And it's not an overwrought performance. It's a real low key. Wow, it just sounds great. All right. Let's try it. This is Imaginary Lover. I'm trying to remember how it goes. I don't remember. <laughs> Someone to share 
sounded kind of Spanish there for a little well, bit. Well, I was happy to play rhythm in that and not sing much. There we go. Wow. Oh, here's a good one. I get to shine on this. These guys are really good friends of mine. We were on the cruise with them in uh, yeah. February on America. the Rock and Cruise. Um, Played with them back when I was with the Guess Who and BTO. They've been around a long time. They have the privilege of having the studios produced by incredible George Martin. Mm -hmm. And their records are incredible. And they were very, very young when they hit it big. Real young. And they were... 17 or so. Um, American kids stuck on the um, Canadian uh, American Forces base in England. So they called themselves America. <laughs> to this song. Neither have I. This is like, this. got these off Wikipedia. This is, My yeah, apologies to second. America. Maybe some guy made those up. No, well, this was, yeah, that was them. Who, which guy was that? I don't wrote know. This? There's two guys that wrote. Anyway. Incredible lyrics. Um, I would never have written those. But it was a monster. I remember that came out in the early 70s. Everybody thought it was Neil Young going, on the first part of the desert, there were walking birds and rocks. And Sounded pretty Neil Youngy. The first thing I met was a fly with a buzz. Yeah. I mean, I never in a million years would have. Yeah. The Maybe. ocean is a desert with its life underground. And a perfect disguise above. Under the cities lies a heart made of ground. But the humans will give no love. <laughs> now, wait a second. 
Okay, it, it doesn't matter. Um, okay. We're not here we for a, seeking the song. Sorry, oh, we're going to do perhaps? Out. Yeah, we have oh, a special great. guest, and we want to send a special thank you out to Gamut Productions, who's been helping us do some of the stuff here. And also, we want to give a big, warm round of applause to Coco. Coco, where are you? I'm right behind oh, you. Oh, Coco. Coco. Okay, sneaking <laughs> around behind me. Okay, Coco's been helping out a lot. Coco's been stranded here in the house with us. Right. I get We get this incredible Japanese meal every mm -hmm. night. She does massage, hair, she sings, she plays drums, she does our social media. Coco's my special lady. Uh, and he's and a very lucky guy. And um, she sings, she plays drums. When we well, play on stage, she's played drums. When we did Kachetuan, she was the drummer. And she sang right. a show and said song, and I went and played drums. Yeah, we. there's only one person missing here. It's Canada's most eligible bachelor right here. Oh, yeah, okay. um, so, um, Coco and I, of course, and I guess everybody, big Doris Day fans, passed away, I think, last year. S mother of Terry Melcher? Yeah, Terry Melcher produced The Birds. Right. And um, there was a saying that went around. Uh, I used to love Doris Day movies. Yeah. Because she was beautiful blonde, right? She was yeah. really great. And she was in a lot of movies with Tony Curtis and guys like that. There's a, there's a saying that girls had. <laughs> I don't know if you even heard it. Is this bad? The Doris Day parking space. No, I don't know what that <laughs> is. When she was in a movie, she'd be driving a little convertible all the time with her blonde hair, and she'd pull into a hotel, and there's always a parking space open for her. The rest is full. There's a Doris Day parking space that everyone's reserved for is that her. real? Yeah. Uh, cool. Women would say that. I'm, I'm hoping to get a Doris Day parking mm. space, right? Because yeah, in every, every movie, she'd be driving in and mm. have it. Okay, this is a great song. So I think this is... I think this is an old Cuban lounge song, mm -hmm. like before the communists took over Cuba or mm. something like that. I, I probably got that wrong, but, and Coco was going to sing it with us. Good. So it's... With you. Yeah. I'll, I'll be playing lead guitar. I'll be uh, doing flamenco guitar. It's kind of a Cuban Latin song. Yeah. We like Gypsy Kings and stuff. Mm -hmm. You won't admit you love me, and so how am I ever That up. Yes. <laughs> that was jazz. The, yeah, it was, was jazz. So in the wrong key. That's real jazz. Thank you, Doris. Rest in peace. Oh, are we gonna rock out now? You're gonna do? Are you gonna Prudence? Or are you gonna do your, no, your your turn? Aren't you doing a Skinnerd? Yeah. Well, let's do I'll this. Do that yeah, let's do that. Let's do the Eric. Written by some great guys in Nashville. Mm. Do you want to answer some viewer questions? Yeah, really sure. Quick? Sure. Okay. Chat time. 
interest. We got one thing. What kind of guitar is this? This is a, an old Yamaha. Yeah. Looks new. It's called a Compass. Cutaway, incredible neck, great tone. It's got a mic right inside. When you plug it in, it's just a great sounding guitar. And it was here in my archives. We're stuck here with not a whole lot of stuff. Like I saw the Elton John thing he did on Fox Network with everybody's joining in videos. He's in a house with a piano. He couldn't even play on the show. So we're lucky we've got these guitars. Okay, we've got a few questions here. All right. Um, I can't remember if I asked any of these in a previous episode because the days yeah. are all blurring. Nobody saw point. the other yeah. ones. <laughs> so, all right, so here's one. Um, okay, aside from your Gretsch guitar collection, what was your most extravagant, extravagant purchase when the money started coming in? And then the same question to me. When the money started rolling in, what did you blow it on? I think I know the answer with you. You blow it on everything. On everything. No, first thing I did was I bought, I paid off my parents' mortgage. I gave the money to pay it off. I bought my dad a car, a new car. And I went back on the road. What kind of cars did Popsy drive? Uh, I got him a station wagon. Mm. And then I got my, because whatever you do for your own parents, guess what? You got to do for your wife's parents. Mm. So I got the Stevenson, Bob Stevenson, uh, my father-in-law, a car, gave him some money to pay yeah, off but their what, I, I thought you were going to talk myself? about the Rolls. Oh, the Rolls. Um, I bought a Rolls Royce. Uh, actually, when I left the Guess Who, I had a gallbladder problem. And so I had to leave the Guess Who, and I was what was called elective surgery. And it was so not nice being in Winnipeg at that time, because I had left the Guess Who, and American Woman was number one, album and single. We decided to go and hide out in Saskatoon at my in-law's house who lived up there. So I went and stayed in their basement on a little bed. And uh, I had a gallbladder situation one night, which is a very painful thing to happen. And the doctor drove up to see me in the Rolls Royce. A Rolls Royce, like a 54 Silver Dawn, beautiful. That looked like Eric Clapton's car, Bob Dylan's car. And uh, as he was giving me a shot at Demerol, because I'm a terrible painter, remember? And he's saying, I'm going to give you a shot and count back from some 10. I went, 10, I want to buy your car. And I went to sleep. And I woke up the next day, and then I went through the whole gallbladder situation. At the end of the summer, he was moving, and I bought his car, the Rolls Royce. And it wasn't that expensive. So 54 Silver Dawn was quite beautiful. Uh, and then I spent a fortune fixing it up, because how do you get parts for an old English car from 1954? in Vancouver, which is where I lived at the time. So we're scouring, getting guys driving around junkyards and scrapyards in England, trying to find a knob for the radio or things like that. That was pretty yeah. extravagant. Yeah, well, there was also the Rockstar Mansion. Oh, yeah, then yeah. The, then that went with the house, the mansion, yeah. the big house. But uh, it's weird, you buy, you build this house and buy the car and you go away on the road. I mean, all... Then you get divorced. Then you get and divorced and she Star gets mansion. it all. Yeah, and then you start not at zero. But below zero. Below ground zero. Well, well below Way below. Zero. Okay, uh, I blew my money you on... You were there. Yeah. You I witnessed this. Yes, it was... <laughs> you were a 10-year-old, 12-year-old kid. Um, I blew my money on books. Oh. I loved go hanging out in bookstores on my tours. I would just go by myself, solitary wanderer. And Borders was still in business at the time, so I would go to the big Barnes and Nobles, Borders. I actually had sort of a mental map in my head. Every major city in America, I knew where all the big bookstores were, so I would go and, and we would I wound up with a whole lot of stuff. I read a lot. I didn't have a whole lot of friends at the time, so I read a lot. I remember being on the road with him and Customs opening his suitcase, <laughs> and one of them which weighed about 80 or 90 pounds, was full of books. And he, yeah. a suitcase of books. Yeah. Not only did he buy books, he took them on the road. Okay, one, one quick other question before we do this next song. Uh, Mike asks, who would you say is the kindest, well-known musician you have ever met? The most generous, the most courageous. So I guess he's kind of saying, who's the most stellar human being that you've met who's a well-known musician? I don't know a lot of guys personally. You kind of know them because you play in a band. But I've known Neil Young since we were very young teenagers in Winnipeg uh, in kind of the 64, 65 era. Before I left with the guest suit, he left and started Buffalo Springfield. And I've done things with him over the years, both Tal and I have. And um, he's a very generous guy, but he doesn't tell anybody about it. There's no press on it and everything. And he had a son who was autistic, and he... Uh, started the Bridge School in entertainment. He gets people to go every year to the Bridge School. And he and that, it takes about three weeks in September 
And he's done charities for me in BC here against the, the lumber mill in Crofton, which is polluting the air and the water. And uh, Farm Aid, the Bridge School, he does all kinds of, his whole, him and his whole crew go out for two or three weeks, all at their own expense and do charities and raise the money. So he's a very kind, generous guy. And whenever I've wanted something, I haven't asked him for anything, but he senses it, he calls me up and offers. Like he, he offered to do the, uh, the uh, the Duncan oh, I, with you yeah. and you and me and him and the bare naked ladies. We all did this charity raise a hundred thousand bucks for the uh, what's it, Duncan BC? Not Duncan Crofton, Crofton yeah. BC, the, the the pulp mill there. Okay, well I have one. I, I just I've been racking my brain as you were talking. Who and I've met a lot of famous musicians, but you don't get to know them super intimately, like right. Dad says, because you you do a tour, you hang out for briefly backstage and. You're not, they're not integrated into your life, of course. But here's one thing, and sadly, because he's really talented, we haven't heard from him in a long time. But you might remember the name Sean Mullins. He had a big song in 99 or 2000 called Rockabye. Everything. So I, I did all of these little tours and festivals because I had a big hit on it that, uh, on the radio at the same time. So I did all of these shows with Sean Mullins. And the, the reason that I have a big soft spot for Sean is that I was so unorganized. I couldn't seem to get my head together. And this was no drugs or alcohol. This is just what I'm like. I'm just, bare, I'm just barely hanging on to reality, logistically anyway, as in the best of times. And I just couldn't ever seem to get my, my gear together. I mean, I would try, but then it would turn out that I'd forgotten extra strings. I forgot my chords. You know, I would try, I would make lists, and it, it's like a kind of mental disability or something. So I kept showing up at these shows, these big things, and I often would have to go out by myself. I had like a 35, 40 minute set. It was just me with an acoustic guitar. And it's like, okay, 15 minutes of showtime, you know, and I'm ready to go. And like all of a sudden, you know, I don't have my tuner. I don't have, and Sean Mullins was always on these shows. So it just became this thing over and over and over again. I'd have to go crawling back to Sean Mullins' dressing room, you know, like little knock, hey, Sean, I'm, I'm just, I'm really embarrassed about this. I'm really sorry because of the last five times. Do you have a tuner that I could borrow? Or do you have an extra set of strings? Or do you have any picks? I don't have any picks. And every <laughs> single time, Sean, who's like a, a true son. Who's your roadie? He had a really nice roadie. I didn't oh. have a roadie, and I, it was, you know, management. It's all kinds of infrastructure problems, okay? Um, and I'll, I'll do it differently next time. So I'm a whole new man now. But at the time, I just couldn't mentally. I wasn't there. I was immature. But anyway, so every time, there was not even the remotest hint of irritation. And he's a true Southern gentleman, Sean. And every time, it was like, hey, man, I totally understand. I mean, this happens to all of us. Come right on in here. Kyle's going to get y'all set up here. Kyle, would you help out our friend Tal here? So then the... Sean's every wrote, day? It would happen all the time. Yeah, okay. So I just... I So thank you, Sean Mullins. If you ever see this, I, I always will appreciate your kindness. Anyway, let's do this classic song. Uh, Be the 
interesting tune. I wish we could change the world. Oh, it's time for a Beatles song. Are you doing the Beatles? Beatles, okay, I'm gonna drop down to E. Okay, we'll see if we can do this one. song yeah that's my favorite Beatles song really yeah well that beginning is very cool I very know. neat when it it's like when it ends it's sort of starting again is you this know? your so, southern one yeah but do your your Skinner thing yeah we're gonna go down south right now we're going down south and then we'll got time for two more maybe sure do that one and that one sure you ready to rock yeah, out sure <laughs> Satellites Got a little change in my pocket Going ching-a-ling-a-ling -a -ling. Wanna call you on the telephone Baby, give you a ring 
And keep your hands to yourself. Keep your hands to yourself. and keep your hands to yourself. One more. I'm just kind of modifying the sound like a conductor. One more. Well, this originally is in... Uh, is this a Skinner? Yeah, this okay. is Leonard Skinner. We're going to go down south. Want to say hello to all our friends down there? Hello, Leonard and Skinner. I mean, this is a lot of bang for the buck. This is a three-chord song. We did nine shows with Skinner last year in Canada with their farewell tour, which lasted, mm. I think, three years. They're still doing it. The four years. In fact, they asked us to do a gig a little while ago, but nobody's doing gigs anymore. Well, you know, people kind of criticize them because it's not Ronnie on lead vocals and it's only Gary left. But, but there's Ricky is on drums. Or no, Ricky, the original drummer, the original, original drummer on their early demos is on guitar. He's a phenomenal guitar player. He was a very nice guy. Yeah. So it's Ricky, pretty much a Skinner guy. Gary on lead, who signed my SG. We can, I can show that in another video. Yeah. And then uh, Ronnie's brother on lead vocals. So we're anyway, we're going to close it out here. Hope you're hanging in there. Thanks to everybody who helped us make this remotely. Thank you, everybody. Thanks person. for tuning in. Thank you, Coco. That Thanks for your mail and email and letters. We've gone all over today. Britain. We'll be back next Friday at the same time. You ready? I'm ready, yep. You're leading. You are Leonard Skinner. You're a Taliban Zant. I can't sing as high on the record, so we'll shift it up.
let's go. All that you need is in your soul. If you can do this, oh baby, if you try. All that I want for you, my son, is to be satisfied. And be simple. everybody thank you see you next week Backman and Backman <laughs>